on the ADHD direction or not. And one of her findings was that that if the teachers had a history of teaching older grades and now they were teaching kindergarten, yeah. they really saw the kids as symptomatic. Um, then, <laughs> yeah, they are a little. <laughs> See, related to this, children don't really have good capacity to, in general, like right. a whole range of children, right. to decide that they're going to pay attention to what you want until they're probably six years of age. Right. Up until then, their minds are set to move and develop in the direction that works for their mind. Right. And so consequently, from now, from like <coughs> three and a half on, we're forcing children to sit down and do things that we want, which in a way is pushing them toward being inattentive because they can't do this because it isn't right for them. Maybe some few can and they're the ones that look really good. Right. So we have a system that's actually making children appear more inattentive <laughs> than making them do things that don't work. Yes. And you know, if we have, there have been other studies I've seen where if you have the kids doing activities like they're doing music and songs and all of that. Boy, they're paying attention. They don't show any symptoms. Right. But when you have them sit down and stare at a piece of paper at five or six years of age, oh gosh, they're so symptomatic. So, so the interaction of curriculum, um, especially in the early years, might make a difference in terms of how children develop their self-esteem and their sense of themselves as something like that. Interesting. That's true. And we've talked about this, right? So part of the issue, right, when I hear, well, let's teach kids to take notes, my first gut reaction is, how about we not have notes for anyone? What about that we do it? Like, right. just let's take away some of those things, or you hear the argument, well, what are they going to do in college? Well, college sucks. Why do we have to make high school and middle school suck? Because we <laughs> don't know how to do a better job of teaching it, right? So, I, I mean, there is that argument, but, well, <laughs> you know, maybe they don't need it because there are other ways that they can learn that are more effective that don't involve these Technics. skills. Right. That yes, they don't have, but uh, right. It's not, it's, it's not like they can't think. They can think and they can reason and they can do amazing stuff. They just suck at they give you notes, <laughs> and it brings them down with kick, you know everything. Yeah. Which is where I started. That's where we are as special educators. But if we don't teach these skills and if we keep, I mean, we're doing all kinds of things. There are kids that can learn them. And for the kids that can learn them, we've got to teach them because we're enabling. It's not a nice word. But we are. So, I, I mean, we see kids in our groups that sit there and say, I don't have to do it. My mom is going to do it. Really? You, you can learn this. You can. And I say, you can learn this. We've got this. Or my teacher's going to do it for me. I know, but you can learn it. And I always go back, and, and we've had this conversation, so I raised two children with ADHD, right? Um, and my middle child was the poster child. And when he got deployed to Afghanistan at the bright age of 19, um, I got an email, I think, I don't remember how we communicated, that said, I don't have my cold weather gear, can you get it to me? No, dude, I can't help you now. <laughs> I don't even know where your cold weather gear is or what that means, but how did you get on a mountain in Afghanistan without it? <laughs> right? And so, at some point, there are skills that we've got to teach. Now, what you said a minute ago about transferring is really interesting because that's really what we want to do. What we really want to do is teach these skills that they hate. Right? They, I mean, it's really hard. He still doesn't want to be organized. He's 26, thank God for his wife. But, I mean, it's hard. Right? So, but how do we teach it so that we transfer it to that point? I'm at a starting point. I won't live long. <laughs> Go ahead. So, uh, I've been using this notion that they're in, they have a problem with being attention. I actually see it as the opposite. <coughs> I see them as attending to eight things at once. Yes. So, it's, so when we say they're inattentive, yeah. like, I mean, I have the opposite, I can hyper focus and anything is like trying to distract right. me and I'm just ignoring. Like, um, but it, it actually is a use. That's a useful skill in some cases. It's not a very useful skill. It is. Meanwhile, I'm reading my book, and there he's you know. So, <laughs> but so it, it, partly it, it's that it's a to me it's a skill. It's a skill I don't really have to try to attend to eight different things. It's not a particularly useful skill in school <laughs> Classroom. when you have a teacher and you want me to hyper focus on on that, and I'm attending to the snow falling and the kid over there chewing gum and right. all this. So I, I'm wondering about that characterization of, of students. Right. And, um, and people have written about that yeah. exact thing. Right. And hyper focus is a 
symptom of ADD. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And, and it's fun to watch because that's what we get. They can play video games, right? Yeah. What do you mean you can't pay attention? You can play video games for five well, that's hours. That's because there's so much stimulation right. in the video game that you get hyper focused on the video right. game. Right. So, yeah, it, I agree. And that happens. And they do. They can focus on some things and not others. Um, it's about self awareness. It's about teaching them to be aware of when they need to focus and how to focus. I had one student that was doing so well. Um, he was great, and I was te taking data, and all of a sudden he zoned out, and he just zoned out, okay? And he was trying to attend, I know he was, but he was looking at the ceiling or something, and I, and I saw it happen. And so we don't usually tell them what the data says, but I, when it was over, um, I said, were you paying attention? And he said, no. I said, cool, what were you thinking about? And uh, he said, well, today this girl said da 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 and he told me the whole thing. But he wasn't aware that that had happened until it was too late. So if, if you need to pay attention to what's happening in the room or when you're walking across the street so you don't get ran over or eaten by a bear, then it's about bringing awareness to the fact that you're not even paying attention. So that's what the self-management. At least control that and move some things to the background. Right. When you need to. <clears throat> yeah. And, and then convincing a seventh grader that they need to listen to us talk about science is a whole nother issue. Um, yeah. Well, no, definitely not. And it's hard and it's difficult and we've heard all that. Right. So, questions? Thoughts? Yeah. It's fun stuff. Thank you for letting me do it. All right. Well, thank you so Thanks. much. Thanks. 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 Than